All right. Hope you, uh, I hope you had an amazing week. I hope you enjoyed my technical setup. Uh, so, <clears throat> I mean, I appreciate your stamina and passion for gaming to make this 10 a.m. session of the last day. I mean, it must earn really hard last night. Um, so, let's get it started. My name is Jin Hadi. I'm a co founder of Spatial. Uh, Spatial is a UGC uh, social gaming matters platform. Um, so we're gonna talk about how we're helping the Unity developers and game developers to create and distribute their games easily online today. Before we get into the topic, let's start with uh, some of our uh, background on the company. <clears throat> the Spatial actually started as an AR and VR collaboration platform six years ago with this, with this mission of um, making this internet more immersive, human, and fun. But during the pandemic, uh, we found out that there's tremendous amount of interest from our community using our platform for sharing their artistic experience, artistic cities, and share, host their social gathering. Um, and the brands like Vogue, Christie's, McDonald's started taking it up to have their online interactive presence. So we naturally evolved into a platform uh, for people to share uh, amazing artistic experience online. Um, and what we found out is that the, our creators have been wanting like more and more interactivity in their, in their experience that they can share on the platform. We released this uh, Unity SDK recently and has been getting amazing reception. Um, so all the game developers, creators uh, can pick up Unity uh, they have been starting to uh, instantly publish their experience through web, mobile, and VR and all platforms using Spatial. Um, so, and we're going to talk about how we're going to help the game developers to, to really use this platform to get their work discovered and uh, the projects created easily. Um, but let's talk about games for a second. So games has been always a highest form of creativity combining storytelling, and art, and it's also about co-experience, which is uh, some, is, the co-experience is really interesting. It's, it's, it's been, it's the way this humanity has been communicating with each other, building relationships since first campfire for thousands of years. Uh, and as people look for better, uh, more deeper kind of ways to build relationships online, this co-experience has become uh, brought up as like, a way to build communities. So in some way, the games is the bridge between the past and future of human communication. And in that regards, it's extremely important to be able to share your game and easily share this experience with your friends and other people, communities online. And, but if you think about that as the, the priority of like publishing games, in today's world, the distribution is not so straightforward. It, it comes with some challenges. First, we come to the high world today, which there is a sound effect, the animation. Uh, you know, the, the downloading is hard. Like, if you build a game or publish the game, you have to, you want to share it with your family and friend. You need to ask them to, like, spend 40 minutes downloading. Uh, and you have to deal with all different kinds of requirements from different app stores uh, and find a way to get around some of the constraints that they have. And even if you publish your game successfully, getting it discovered is not as easy. With scale as a games up, how do you get your game discovered? Um, but before we talk here, before talking about the distribution part, the creation of games today comes with challenges too. Let's say you have an idea, at stories, art direction, uh, then you can build game out of. How do you build a game? I uh, you have to build your entire multiplayer piping, voice video, uh, text chat. You have to deal with app store distribution. Um, figure out the movement mechanics for the avatars. Now, how do you set up your monetization and discovery? So then it's all, you have to build all these components. But in an ideal world, we really think that game developers and these creators should focus more energy on this parts that's above the line, art, animation, story, the gameplays, all the fun parts. And that's exactly where Spatial comes in. Uh, we want you to focus on the fun part where we take care of all the art we call this zero infrastructure game. Fumble a bag, now I will not fumble a bag. Fumble a bag, now I will not fumble a bag. Act like
like you know how this goes. Infrastructure game. We want to make the creation and distribution of games and interactive experiences easy, accessible, and seamless. So, how do we actually make it happen? How do we what do we exactly support to make it happen? So, spatial, first of all, uh, so we're built, uh, so we support one click publishing from Unity. So, Unity already has a super, like, really vibrant community of creators and developers. Uh, with millions of developers uh, actively building, has amazing kind of features like uh, scenes and like lighting and shader editors, and all of these tool sets that we're already used to and be directly used to build experience on spatial. Because like our belief is that we want to make, we want to help our creators use tools that they already know as much as they can. Um, and the publishing process is super easy. You just build a scene on our, on our toolkit built in Unity and one click and you get apps and experiences on mobile, web, and VR all at the same time. Um, multiplayer infrastructure is really hard to build. Like we can confidently say that because we spatial actually has been building this multiplayer experience over the past six years. Um, so all the infrastructure that you need to build this multiplayer like network avatars and video, voice chat and text chat, so everything comes as a, a package that you can use our toolkit. Um, so you don't have to worry about those layers. Um, and it's not just a multi-platform experience, but experience you build in Unity that publish on spatial, it runs single tethers across these different platforms, like mobile, web, VR. So some users can join your space uh, from VR, and another user can, in, at the same time, join from mobile. So, and, it's important to emphasize how important it is to um, uh, run your experience on web browser without downloading. So this is a really important if you think of gaming as the de facto future, like like way we communicate and build communities. Because you can literally share your game with a link, just like you share your website and share it on Twitter, get distributed, get known. Um, and What's really not, the nice thing about using Unity is that you can use, take advantage of all the cool the graphics, rendering pipeline, the Unity URP. So like the, what you see and all the videos you saw so far is actually running on the web browser. Um, so this almost like AAA level, like really high visual quality experience can be running on the web browser without downloading a separate app. Uh, so that's taking advantage of Unity, the URP pipeline. Um, so that means that we can accommodate different high the aesthetics from different creators. You don't have to force people to follow, you know, certain artistic direction that we have, but can be very photorealistic or it can be very stylized, like some of the other games you see out there. Um, and we're gonna get more into details in what exact tool that we're providing in the second part of the presentation, but we provide all, all the tools that you need, like custom avatar vehicles, um, interactions and lightings and all the stuff that you need to build like Really, really engaging games. So, the last thing is the, the discovery engine. It's like once you publish your app, uh, it's it's generally very not it's, it's it's hard to get discovered. But on spatial, you can see almost like a social media level like recommendation engine, categorization, hashtags. So you can easily get it discovered and known. Um, one thing you might have not heard from us yet is the economy. Um, it is our furry to make our creators succeed um, in many ways, but also financially uh, by building a spatial. We have this like in-space economy and global economy like prototype that we're testing internally, and we'll 
share more in detail very soon, and this is going to launch in summer. So you will be able to create and, and share your items in our marketplace, build your economy in your own world that's, that you build on Spatial. Um, so it talked about a bunch of features. Uh, let's see some of how some of our creators are using Spatial. The Cyber Nerd Baby is a, is a group of amazing, uh, talented developers um, who actually put, put together this game in, in actually a matter of days, not weeks. So you can see this, the fly simulator experience that uh, you can basically like, travel across this alien planet with this, some of the iconic vehicles that you might recognize, which is a bad art. And so, so after they built this experience and, and shared a link on their Twitter, they got discovered super easily, and then now they got commissioned with a lot of more than half a dozen uh, projects, which really helped them to like make a living off their creation. Um, but it's it's not only how the creators distribute the the experience, but it's also like we're innovating how game developers can build and test their games. So Felipe Partin is. Uh, really talented uh, game developer based in Vancouver. Uh, but she's been building this experience uh, in a few days. And what's really interesting is how he actually approaches this development. He, is, as he publish, as he designed the game, he can publish, keep publishing his updates online and he can see how the real players can enjoy his experience as, as, it, as, as it goes. So this is like a new way, new paradigm designing games so you can involve the players in the process of your designing and testing. So this flexibility that Spatial has is really enabling this new, new ways to design your experience. Um, when you have this level of flexibility, um, like what's really nice is like gamers can use this, this new, new medium as a way to tell your stories, like uh, almost like a Netflix episode. And you can launch the game uh, like chapter by chapter instead of like waiting to figure out the entire story arc. So IJH Edwin is, is an actual individual uh, creator, uh, who's real, very talented, built this uh, Sound of Mr. Forest a game uh, in, in a few days. And so he lost this uh, game on Spatial. The reaction has been great. So they decided, he decided to launch a new chapter, uh, which is a capture world. Uh, it's basically the forest got uh, taken over by this evil force. Now you have to save it. You know, and make it breathe back. Um, so, this ability to flexibly like building and launching while testing, it's a lot of people to to use spatial almost like an interactive sort of Netflix like like a way they can build a new episode and if the reaction is great, they can keep going. Um, so, we're really hoping to see like new kind of new way, new medium. Uh, that the storytellers can use uh, to you you know make their story interact and then launch without risk uh, without waiting to figure out the entire story. Um, but it's not just the game developers who uh, is benefiting by this approach. Like some of the um, creators on our platform uh, was started from like different disciplines like art, music. Uh, so Ambus Seven Three Studio is a very uh, it's an established art studio in Korea. Um, and when we launched the Unity SDK, the first thing they did was like, they took the existing exhibit and then uh, merged that with this like gaming and interactivity that you, um, we provide a spatial platform. So this famous exhibit called, uh, this, this work is based on very iconic media art piece called Dada Son, which is from uh, iconic media artist Nam Jun Pat, uh, like in the Chinese century. So they restore this art digitally uh, by turning it into a game. It's because they can explore this underground space to find this like famous recognizable art and now play with it. It's like a new way to participate in this artistic experience, a new way to build relationship with the original artist. Um, and the, the last thing I want to mention is that uh, with this flexibility of like distribution and creation, it's so much easier to create and collaborate with other kinds of creators. So the Cyber Nerd they, they may collaborate with this famous DJ, Dob Stilo, uh, who's been regularly hosting this music, uh, the DJ parties in Spatial, where like uh, tens of uh, 
kind of like told the crowds like gather and like dance around and celebrate his music. Um, so now they're turning it's like this like artistic venue into almost like a virtual theme park experience by merging interactivity and interactive objects and this uh, lots of the vehicles that you can enjoy. Um, so yeah, I think eventually we really think this is um, opening a door for game developers and the non-developer creators to like come together and build together to create this like new kinds of media and that's powered by like gaming mechanics, but also like, inspired by artistic kind of energy and direction. So, um, so we really believe that like every creator can potentially work with developers and it, and be developers at, at some point and uh, really open up this kind of the door, uh, like expands like what gaming can do beyond just simple entertainment, but just can expand it to the cultural and community building and artistic kind of application. Um, what's next? So we're moving very fast. And the, now that I get this roadmap, we already accomplished a lot of it that's on the roadmap. Um, so uh, the main thing is the Q3 and the later this summer, uh, we'll get interested in space economy, but people can not uh, monetize and uh, really build their, their moral uh, like, like with, with a good sort of um, had an ecosystem uh, between like the creators and the players, and so, and the custom vehicle is coming. Uh, stay tuned. We have very exciting prototypes to share. Um, so now we're gonna start chapter two, and for that I will hand it over to our head of spatial head of community, Jake, to show you all the awesome stuff that you can do with our tool. No, no, thank you. for the more fun part, not that it wasn't fun. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jenna. Yeah, hi everybody, good morning. Thanks everybody for being here early Friday morning, last day of GDC, I know we're all tired, um, but excited to keep learning about more things in the game industry. Um, so yeah, my name is Jake Steiderman, I am Spatial's Head of Community, uh, also leading our uh, uh, Creator Toolkit Developer Program. So I'm gonna dive a little deeper into what the toolkit actually looks like and how you can build a uh, relatively quick experience uh, today that you're going to be able to jump, to, jump into as well. Uh, so if you want to now actually uh, get your the spatial app queued up on your phone, it's just uh, spatial in the app store, and you'll be able to jump into the experience rail while you're here um, at the end of the section. So this is S-P-A-T-I-D-A-L. Um, so as uh, Jenna mentioned, uh, as Jenna mentioned, what we've created here, we're kind of calling uh, zero infrastructure gaming. We like to say when everyone else zags, we zig. Uh, zero infrastructure gaming. It's a little fun man of words. Um, so what does it mean to, to zig as here? Infrastructure gaming. Uh, as Jenna mentioned, you can build in Unity, a tool you already know and use. Um, hopefully a lot of you know, uh, know and use and love. Um, and with our SDK, it really gives you that pipeline and set of tools to make your experience work instantly across a web browser, Android, iOS, and VR. So you can focus on the game and not all, all the back and technical bits. So within the, the creator toolkit, this is just kind of a, a sampling of all the components uh, and tools that we offer to you that you can use um, bits and pieces, you know, optional things that you can do to make it really easy uh, to build the experiences. So very similar to the ones that you saw just a few minutes ago. Uh, everything from uh, publishing entire spaces and worlds and templates for those spaces uh, to custom avatars. So you can use uh, Ready Player League we have integrated into Spatial by default, but you can also upload your custom rigged FBX avatar models right for Unity. Uh, things like triggers, point of interest markers, uh, interactive prefab objects, so people can walk up to say a jukebox and play music, uh, and lots of other things. This is just a real taste of what you could do um, including support for visual scripting and a quest building system that you can use if you'd like to help guide uh, players through your experience on the platform. So again, all these components are available to you. You can pick and choose what you like in addition to just about anything you can do with it in Unity itself. So we can just really help you power your experience um, and get it out to players. So once you publish your game, you know, that kind of zero for short gaming approach, right, is what do you get? within spatial itself. So you're looking at 
a spatial web browser, all of these components come with your experience when you publish. Everything from voice and video chat, uh, as well as an emote system. You can even publish your own custom emotes and avatar animations uh, to the multi multiplayer and avatar system that we talked about. So you can have up to 50 people, sometimes up to 500 people uh, in your space at a time using, again, ready for me avatars or your own custom avatar system. Uh, and sharing a privacy. So spaces and games that you create are private by default. And you can open those up to either specific individuals or make it publicly accessible across the platform of the hundreds of thousands of people we have every month uh, on Spatial. And then chat is built in as well. So we have text chat built in to every space, which you can turn off if you like, and it has built in moderation tools as well. Uh, every user, uh, every we call it Explorer on Spatial, gets their own profile. So if you were a creator of building worlds, building games, you and add your, uh, your profile where you can show off spaces and games that you've made for people to discover. Uh, your friends, your community can follow you and get notified when you create a new space or go live uh, in your space. And you can also reward badges, which you'll see here in a second, for people that are explorers that are going through your experiences can get badges rewarded and then show those off uh, on their profiles as well. So this is uh, what we're gonna be uh, creating here, walking you through uh, creating say so this is a, an early books that's uh, very tough <laughs> we got to turn out now uh, so this is a, an early glimpse actually uh, at a new experience called first quest that we're going to be rolling out here uh, in the next few weeks this is going to be the initial experience that new players and new explorers uh, can go through when they jump into spatial and this will work here we're seeing it in web browser um, but this will also work instantly in VR on your global phone as well this is a slightly tweaked version uh, of that first quest experience, but kind of a short version of what you had through here. So you can see we went through grabbing a torch that was on the wall, taking that torch to light a bonfire, and then when we lit that bonfire, a number of gems appear that we can then collect. And then once we've collected all those gems, then uh, a, a, a station, as we call on the station astronaut, uh, appears, and we can essentially acquire and induce him as our inhibitor. So let's walk through uh, what that looks like. It's a good thing we pre-recorded the, the, the steps here because well, the technical difficulties we had, so we, we can't forget. Um, but the last piece is on the discoverability uh, as well. So uh, as Jim mentioned, you get all those components, all those features in the platform, but we also make it really easy for your experience to get discovered. Since there's so many experiences and games that are being built every single day, kind of getting through that noise can be really challenging, especially if we talk about the millions of games that are out there today. So through um, our discoverability engine, um, you can introduce you know, meta tags to your space, metadata tags to your space, so people can find things based on certain topics. You can go live, so instantly get your space promoted to the front page in the Live Now section. So if you're hosting an event or game challenge or something where you want people to come into the space at a specific time, uh, you can go live once per day. Uh, and we're going to be introducing soon different sections, almost like Netflix categories, depending on the types of spaces that you create and recommendations for uh, spaces that we can use to check out based on ones you've looked at before or ones you think you might like. So jumping into our space here, uh, we're in Unity. We are opened up our starter template that we provide to you, and that has all the components that are included into it. Um, so we're going to be adding a quest uh, component into the space, and this lets us define the tasks and the quest that you have to go on uh, in this particular experience. So we add our quest component, we can choose what badge we want to reward, so we can upload our custom badge design, and then walk through step by step what are the, in this case, four different tasks that the player has to go through uh, to get that badge rewarded. Um, so in this case, four tasks. The first one is find the torch, then light the bonfire, collect the gems will be the next one, and we can choose whether that task is more of a check task, it's a one-off thing, like I grabbed the torch, I completed that task, in this case, we'll go back here in a second, to collect the gems, we can do a progress test. So collect X items, complete that task. Um, so we provide that infrastructure really easy. And then the last part is to become a spaceship, and that's going to be a check. Um, probably about a check task as well. So the next thing we want to do is set up um, our first task, which is the grabbing the torch. So we have a component called an interactable, which basically means you can walk up to an object, right? Press F click on an object on the platforms um, to interact with that object. In this case, 
the uh, interactable ones of the Scopus Um This hit the bonfire, and it's not worse. Um, so we're going to light that light that bonfire. So we'll walk up to the uh, to the bonfire, uh, the fire, and press F, and that's going to activate the bonfire and complete that task. Uh, interface. So we're we're really using you can see Unity's event system, but we're just adding these components that can plug it uh, to spatial platforming ecosystem. So when you publish that experience to spatial, uh, it all just works. And those UI components work across um, web, VR, uh, and mobile. So we're going to choose uh, the fire that's got a particle system on it and just activate uh, that fire. And then we'll go down and uh, we have quest uh, uh, events, quest unity events, a spatial quest. Uh, we can then choose and add a new uh, quest event. In this case, we're going to choose our first quest that we've created here and then complete task and then choose the task that we set up before. So it's really easy. There is no code involved um, in building and spatial. It's all you're using the power of bringing it up within Unity. Oh, you'll see in the last task here, we do get to visual scripting, which we support uh, to add that next layer of interactivity uh, in the space. So the next thing we're going to add um, are in those uh, gems that we can collect. So that's that in progress uh, task. Uh, so we're actually gonna set up uh, a prefab uh, with that gem prefab and set that up here. So when you were using a trigger event, so we can detect when an avatar uh, intersects uh, with that object and then trigger things to happen. So in this case, we're going to hide that gem uh, and then a task progress or uh, the collect the gem task. Uh, and that happens four times. And once we've collected that four times, we'll just set it in the quest component, uh, then we'll go off completed that task. Now, the last one here is actually becoming a station. Um, so we're gonna add another interactable uh, component to our station avatar here in the scene. Uh, we're gonna call this become a station. But we're actually not gonna set up beyond interact events within uh, the inspector. We're gonna open up the visual scripting system uh, and create a really simple uh, node, set of nodes to assign that avatar model to the local avatar. In this case, uh, the one thing I haven't showed you here is we've actually already uploaded that avatar model. We've already published it um, to, to Spatial as an individual object. So once I jump into uh, the visual scripting notes here, you'll see I'm gonna refer to SKU for that published avatar. So I'm just placing the interactable UI component in the scene. That's what the user will see when they're jumping in. They'll see press F to become a Spatial. And I'm gonna open up uh, the script machine here Call that become a spaceship. And we actually uh, let you use just about all of um, Unity provided nodes uh, in the visual scripting system, and then supply our own set of nodes, typically dozens of different codes that you can use um, that, are unit, uh, that are spatial specific to lay around on top of um, our platform. So in this case, we're going to be called the on interact node, the spatial interactable on interact node, and then connect that to the set mobile avatar node so we can set. Uh, the avatar of the local player. And we're gonna set that to the spatial avatar, which is that skew uh, there. So as soon as the player interacts with that avatar, we're going to override their local avatar with the one that we set here, and then they can use that uh, freely within the space. And then once they've interacted with the avatar, that actually completes uh, that task, uh, which is the last one we have uh, in, in this uh, experience. And now that they've completed all of these tasks in our quest, they'll get rewarded or advantage that they can then show off on their boat. I'm gonna skip that one. That was the, the torch uh, from the first step. Uh, but now, um, actually, let me go back. Um, we're gonna publish our experience. So within Unity, uh, we have this, the Creator Toolkit uh, window. We just click Publish after setting up uh, our scene, after we're telling them which scene we want to publish. We could click publish. Uh, it uploads that seed to our system. And within a few minutes, you'll get an email saying that that pocket, uh, the package has been published successfully. Uh, and it'll be accessible across web, VR, mobile. So if you join the visual uh, in VR uh, or in web, that space will be accessible and instantly shareable for anyone who wants to jump into that experience. For example, this space that we went through is actually live now. Um, so if you scan this QR, 
you'll be able to jump in uh, to the experience yourself and try it out in the pros. But I definitely encourage everybody um, to do that and try it out. Uh, if you have multiple people here jumping in, you'll see everyone uh, in that experience. Uh, the great thing is when you jump in, uh, since I'm sure a lot of you are downloading Spatial Now for the first time, you'll see you want to actually have to set up an account um, to do it. Uh, you can jump right in uh, as a, uh, an anonymous avatar. We'll give you a, a set of options of avatar designs to choose from, and you can jump right in uh, to the experience. And when you do want to set up an account, you can do that with Google, Microsoft, Apple, or your email account. So it's super easy to jump in or set up an experience. So you can see how quickly you can go from you know, a story or an idea to your first quest and instantly go work your cross platform quickly uh, and really easy. So that's kind of a glimpse at building with the Creator Toolkit. Um, you know, we're here really wanting to uh, talk to developers, of course, talk to studios um, and talk to, to brands. So if you're an individual developer, an Indian developer, um, with an idea for a game or you're building out your game or looking for an easier way to distribute your experience, uh, definitely come talk to me and join our community. Uh, if you're an indie studio or an agency uh, and you're building uh, your own content, your own UGC content or your own original IP, uh, come talk to, to Jacob here at the Bright Blue Jacket. Um, easy to spot. Uh, and then we're also looking for brand partners. So we have a lot of brands, uh, as you saw in Jenna's part of the presentation, like Vogue, McDonald's, LVMH, Tommy Hilfiger, et cetera. So if you're a brand looking for an easy way to create an immersive experience and get that out to your, um, to your fans, to your consumers, um, then you have a partner onboarding program. Uh, and you can contact our head of partnerships, uh, Gian, as Gian and Fischl Dio. Uh, that's it. So come, we've got a booth uh, today. We've got a booth all week. Come by our booth uh, over in the Expo Hall, uh, S1450. We're behind this corner there. Come and see us. You can get one of these shirts. If you really like this cool Iron Man shirt, Amamla. <laughs> it's been a big hit. Um, come by and see us. Uh, let us know if you came to the talk. We'll be happy to, to give you a shirt. And, uh, and that's it. Thank you so much. Welcome to, to take questions. If you saw on the time that our set aside, was there any questions? Feel free to come.
Never cared what they say, yeah, we've been dope. I'ma need you to see through my window. In the metaverse, crazy how we build, yeah. Never cared what they say, yeah, we've been dope. I'ma need you to see through my window. Yeah, we've been dope. I'ma need you to see through my window. 